when you sharpen knives or skivers or anything like that each one I don't know why but the steel is different you know well I have some French tools you sharpen them one way I have some uh, Japanese tools you sharpen them a different way uh, and you can't do anything without the tools you can't you have to have the tools I deal with people and with one of the most private parts of their body right they have to take their shoes and socks off sometimes they resist because their feet are dirty but I don't mind <laughs> it's part of life See, a shoe is a bag, okay? And you can stick anything in it, right? That's more or less, you know? <laughs> a sandal is not a bag. It's not enclosed, it's open. And uh, it's not as easy to fit as a shoe, you know? You shove a foot in anything and they'll fit. people came in, not the other day, but the past couple of weeks, said, oh, I saw your sandals in so-and-so magazine. And I looked and I said, they're not mine. I mean, they were a style of mine, but they were done by somebody who had worked for me. But I knew immediately they weren't mine. They just looked clunky or something. I don't know. They just didn't look right. So that does happen sometimes. But I can pretty much recognize what I do. I guess it was around 1960. In those days they called me Barbara Leather, right? I paid $200 for the key and started setting up a workshop on 7th, 13 East 7th Street. And the wonderful thing was, because I was in there building benches, the world would come in to help me, you know. Even the, the guys who, uh, who deliver mail, package mail, used to pop in and say, could I put in a nail? Could I do something? It was very nice. It was very, um, it was wonderful. Yeah. Those were the days, my friend. Well, McSorley's is, it's very old, it's supposed to be the first and only uh, pub in the country, or maybe it's only in the city, that did not allow women. I was a neighbor, so I would be going out shopping or somewhere I'd pass, and they'd say, hey, Barbara, come on in, right? But that's when it was not open, you know? They'd sit me down, and I'd have maybe an ale, maybe some cheese and crackers, and they borrowed my chisels. And I had a backyard on 7th Street, so they borrowed my hose, you know, to clean out the ovens and stuff like that. You know, we were neighbors, good neighbors. 
I mean, I did sneak some girls in once, but, you know, they were feminists kids and they wanted to go in so I got them in. <laughs> I won't say how. <laughs> and uh, Dorothy O'Connell, who was the owner of the pub when I was had my shop there, promised her daddy she would not walk in to the place while it was open, ever. So when the, I guess it's civil rights bill was passed, she wouldn't go in, so her son, Denny Kerwin, asked me to come in with him because his mom would not go in. So I went in with the television flashing, you know, all that sort of thing. It was a big deal because McSorley's was very, very well known and very popular. <laughs> well, Cheeky is a real live llama. I was making, I was asked for Martine, who owned her, to make a, a harness, you know, like a, like a horse's harness, sort of, but not, you know, no saddle, no nothing, just the harness itself. And the llamas are very funny because if they don't like you, they will spit at you. <laughs> They're also very lovely with huge eyes and huge eyelashes and just sweet and soft and beautiful. So I walked up to her and I said, hi Cheeky, and I put my arms around her and she just sort of reared her head up and backed up four or five feet, looked at me, really checked me out, and she came over to me and I knew I could measure, then I could touch her and measure her. And she was very cooperative, she really was. When I use up all that leather, then I can quit. The only thing is I keep buying more. <laughs> 